we almost uh we almost said i got everything i need over here you got everything you need over there man you good i got my phone in my way. i'm good i'm good all right all right we about to go ahead and uh we about to go ahead and get this started right here you know what i'm saying i'm really not liking my truck man well i like my truck i just this truck don't have no kind of space in here I mean, don't have no storage, no, no space and no storage. That's, that's what's going on. What's up, y'all? Lockout man over here, back again. What's going on? Let me go ahead and bring me up in there. What's up, everybody? Lockout man here in the truck on the 30 for this podcast interview for this morning. Morning? It's still morning, ain't it? It's, it's before, well, it's a little bit after 12, so... I guess it's officially afternoon, right? I guess Corey, you still there? I'm still there. Oh, it's okay. I, on that morning, so. oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess that morning. I guess that morning hasn't kicked in for you yet. <laughs> oh, man. No more caffeine for this guy. That's for sure. I hear you. I hear you. All right, everybody. I want you guys to pay attention right quick now. Usually my make the call videos, you know, if you guys watch that, you know, I will make a call to a recruiter and talk about the uh, company that they represent. But this time a recruiter of a company reached out to me. Well, this this ain't the first time, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying this is the first time that uh, that me and him been back and forth in the email. Uh, he just wanted to make sure like. Yo, what, what to talk about? You know, I haven't did this before. And I told him, I just said, yo, just just be an honest recruiter. I want everybody to put their hands together for my man. And I'm not sure. Your last name, Johnson? Corey? It is. Corey? Johnson. Corey Johnson. Everybody put your hands together for, uh, for uh, Corey Johnson right quick. Corey, man, what's going on with you? How you feel? Hey, man, I'm doing all right, man. Just enjoying this freezing cold weather here in the middle of Ohio. I love it. All right. So you so you, you, you here in Ohio with me then, huh? So you know yeah. you, you, you know that the weather is kind of is right now. Don't worry. It'll be 60 on Monday, man. It's Ohio. <laughs> it changes on a whim. Man, I mean, for the people that don't know about Ohio, man, let, 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 let me and you tell them about Ohio. We can get – all four seasons in one day can we oh absolutely i remember earlier this year it was like 75 and sunny mm -hmm. then it turned to rain mm -hmm. then it and all of a sudden we're snowing outside like what it's, it's all on the same day it's crazy that's that's how ohio weather works with us man hey for everybody that don't know who you are man go ahead and introduce yourself and let them know who you represent all right I work for Pole Transportation and Versailles, Ohio. We're about 45 minutes north of Dayton. I am the recruiter and retention person here for Pole Transportation. It's my job to get you guys to drive for us. Company only, drive van, which is gravy work right now. Mainly drop and hook for us, too. Okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So let me see if I'm pronouncing it right. You say pole as in P? P-O-H-L. It's pronounced pole hole do you guys have any any relations to rail because i think they spelling is almost identical now we are our own individual company man next year we'll be celebrating 30 years in this business 30 years how, how, how many years you've been with the company i have been here it'll be three years this november i actually started out as a mechanic across the street before i stepped into this recruiting retention role Okay, okay. What what made you what made you make the jump? I mean, I, I would assume being a mechanic, you would make a little bit more cheese. What's, what what made you make the jump? Um, this is something I always wanted to do. I I didn't always foresee myself to be a mechanic. I always wanted to move up and and better myself and better myself for the for my family. So I hold myself to a high standard, and part of my high standard is to was trying to move up. And this is the way that the company saw that I could move up, and so I jumped at the opportunity. All right. So was was there like a uh, a opening like like a posting on the job, you know, or it was something that somebody just came across the street and said, "Hey, you know, we got an opening for a recruiter. You you want to take it?" I expressed to the owner Brian Pohl that I would like to to move up and 
So one of the deals they made with me is that I went back to school, and if I got good grades, which I got straight A's, and which wasn't surprising on my end, you know, they would they would work with me, and this is how they decided to work with me. And so when they when I decided to come across the street, I just I just came across the street in August, actually. So I've been oh, at okay. this for about six months now. So um, it's definitely been an interesting change of pace from being in the shop to where it is fast paced. This is. It's fast paced, but it comes in spurts, you know, because the silic industry, the nature of this industry, man. Just like next week, I've I've had trickle, trickle, trickle drivers, and getting next week we we got no drivers because of just the way that the industry is right now. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you this: by you coming, uh, by you coming across the street, what's the? Do you now usually when when recruiters now? I know you hear of the. Um, uh, it's on the tip of my turn on my tongue, but I can't remember it. But it probably will come back to me. But like most recruiters out there, they there there are some good, honest recruiters out there, and then there are recruiters out there that's just trying to, uh, just I I want to say just trying to make their money. You know what I'm saying? They they work on commission. They they only objective is to get the get the driver in into orientation so they can get paid you you're not that type of of recruiter right no um we're family owned there's four or five family members throughout this whole entire company that have positions that they have worked hard to obtain within the company um i don't get anything if i bring you in or not i make what i make for my salary and that is it so and the only thing that I promise for my position is how much you make per mile. Because guess what? I'm not going to call you every morning like, all right, there, Johnny, I need you to get up and deliver this load now. Mm-hmm. The rest is really mm-hmm. up to you. I'll provide you with equipment that does not break down on a cons- consistent basis, give you loads that you know beforehand where you're going, and, and but I can't drive the truck for you. There's only so much that from my end that my company can control, and we just believe in a straightforward, honest, process and setting out expectations you know some areas we can have you home every weekend uh some places where we hire it's it's every two to three weeks you know we're constantly expanding we're growing by five percent this year but i believe that i think greed does take a motivating factor for people you know trying to hustle people to get into their trucks and stuff over here is that either you're going to come or you're not and i'm not going to lose sweat if you don't you know i have I have a stack of papers for people who've applied and we've turned down because their MVRs and PSPs are terrible or their job history is terrible. That's something that we don't hire here either for is if you have multiple jobs, we just don't do it because we don't feel like you're going to be a good fit. Our average tenure here is about 15 plus years. Um, our longest tenure driver has been here with us since 1996. Okay. And it's, it's fantastic. So, I mean, we believe in trying to reta- retain these drivers and, it's just something that we work really hard to do. We're very flexible. We believe family first in every aspect. If you need time off, it's a simple call to dispatch. Like, hey, I need some more home time. Okay. When would you like it? Would you like it Friday or would you like it Monday? And that's it. You know, it, it's not – nobody's out here busting your balls to, you know, to not to see your family. We want you to see your family. We want you to have that home time that you drive because this job is not for everyone. No, and it isn't. It takes a very special, it takes a very special yeah. person to be – gone from their family for 70 plus hours or less a week to provide provide for them and we encourage drivers to go home and see their families if it's within our if our lanes obviously people we stay out two to three weeks we try work really hard to get them home and they usually get anywhere from two to four days at home when they're out there on the road now let me ask you this question what do you think about a lot of these companies, like I'm, I'm beginning to hear it more and more from ma- uh, from major carriers. Now, as far as Pole goes, the company that you work for, do you do you guys consider? This is part one of the question. Do you guys consider you sales a major carrier or maybe a medium sized carrier? I'd say we are. Uh, I'm gonna go with the basketball analogy since we're right around from March Madness. I would consider us like a mid major school, like. Um, uh, the UD Flyers or, or Rice State University, if you're from around here, or, or Kent State or something like that. Um, we provide all the benefits of major carriers, but we're still small enough to know everybody here by on a first name basis. Um, I can recognize a phone number, pick it up, and know who I'm talking to. Drivers call me all the time, just wanting to to 
to, to chat or, or as my job as a testament, I get calls when drivers are frustrated because stuff isn't working out, you know, okay. and that's what, that's, that's what we handle. But, you know, at mid major, I think we're a, a mid major, but we still have that very mom and pop feel. Cause we only have about 125 trucks. Okay. Not, not yeah. anywhere near what major mega carriers have. Yeah. You guys, yeah. 125 trucks. That's yeah. Yeah. That's you're, you're definitely not a prime, <laughs> yeah, for sure. but you, or a swift. <laughs> but, but, but by the sounds of it, y'all, y'all do have prime moves though. Y'all, y'all not a prime, but y'all can make prime moves. And that's, and yeah. that's kind of good for, that's kind of good for a potential driver uh, to come in. But what I wanted to say, you know, you, you mentioned the fact that, Air, you know, you mentioned the fact that uh, you say that the carrier, you know, they treat you like family. A lot of recruiters say that, man, that about the company. Narrow it down for us about about your company in terms of that aspect, treating you like family. All right. So we have an open door policy here. Um, obviously, some of it is restricted when you first come in. It's just because, you know, you got to announce your presence and stuff. But we allow our drivers, you know, if they need to meet with Brian or anybody up in management, it's literally a phone call away. Come into the office, picking up a phone and dialing to their office and talking to them. You can email them. Um, there's a genuine concern with, with what's going on in their lives because an unhappy driver is not a very productive driver. And so we try to listen to our drivers and try to be there for them. And, you know, when we say we're like family, it's, and we may not get along, but we're all in this together because without one another, nothing is going to get done. You're going to, it's just going to be, you're just going to turn aimless, aimlessly. And, you know, I, I hear all the time, well, they say that, you know, they treat you like family and it's kind of given it a bad name in the industry from everything that I've witnessed in the, in the right. short span of being a recruiter. It's like, but we really hold here to that. Um, I know through, I, I can't say driver's name and stuff, but I know for situations where this company has been over backwards for certain people because of, of family issues and because of family stuff. And I know from my own personal experience, um, I had a very sick child this year and they really helped me out as well. So it, it goes, they not only do it for their own office staff, but they do it for the drivers as well. Like when I said, if you have a family emergency, you may have to deliver it low, but they're going to try to get you home immediately as soon as they possibly can, whether it be through a switch or, or a swap or something, just get you home to deal with that emergency. It's not, it's like, well, this is like the, you know, obviously, you know, stuff happens and, mm -hmm. and they know that here and they try to, they try to be empathetic and reach out to these drivers and, and talk to them, you know, because the driver be having a bad day and make a dumb mistake doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to fire you. They're going to listen to them, find out what happened, and try to help them out here and get through them to be a better person overall. And that's the whole point of family. Okay. Family is supposed to be there to encourage for good behavior and stuff and, and do all that stuff. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Because, you know, a lot of a lot of companies like to tease that. We, we treat you like family. And then when you get in there and you feel like you're the ugly stepchild. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You redheaded know. stepchild like you ain't no you might you're not the redheaded stepchild here i mean everybody every driver here has their own quirks everybody knows how they run i mean it's just it's just the way it is i mean you anybody in here could name off all of our drivers by via phone number you don't have to call in like oh, i'm driver truck number 1337 409 like oh it's like hey jim how you doing today you know it just it's, it's that easy you know that is that is the closest of this company yeah um, that i think that was my yeah. I think that was my problem. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I was a new jack when I was with uh, U.S. Express, but I, at that time, me coming in, I never understood the terminology of of treating you like family, you know, until I actually got with the company I'm with now. So they they actually treat you like family, you know what I'm saying? But when I was with uh, U.S. Express, it was more like a machine. Uh, what's, what's your truck number again? Well, my truck number is such and such and such and such. Oh, oh okay, LaShawn. And then when I hang up with them and I have another problem, I call back and somebody else answers the phone and you got to go through the process all over again. So, but they, they had a bad habit of switching, uh, switching dispatchers like water anyway, but that's no here nor there. <laughs> all right, man. So let's talk about the, uh, company for a little bit. Um, Pole Transportation, thirty y'all celebrating thirty years uh, this year, and you say the owner, his name is what Brian? 
His name is Brian. Uh, is he is is his door open to uh, to drivers if they want to go in there and handshake with them or just talk about their concerns or anything like that? So one of the processes when we bring on drivers that go through orientation, they go around and they meet everybody in the office and in their shop and stuff. And one of the stops is at Brian's office, and he greets each driver personally, doesn't even ask what their names are, already knows, and sh- and shakes their hands and welcomes them aboard. Okay. And if you have any issues, so an interesting little fact about us, besides our little bit of company, our vice president of operations actually started out as a truck driver for us. He drove OTR for us for five years and worked his way up through the company to be second in charge of this company. Okay, okay. So, so, he, so we have a really good feel of what goes on out there because of Rick and, and the stuff that Rick implements because it's supposed to be driver friendly. And he's he, he's probably one of them uh probably one of them bosses that's like, nah. I, since I did it, I already know what's going on. So you can't tell me different you know yeah. what i'm saying type yeah. deal you know yeah. how, yeah, how us driver, that, that. yeah you know how us drivers trying to come out here and we try to like you know do some sly stuff and he'll be like stop hold up i've been there i've done that no 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 <laughs> that's what's up yeah he, he know he knows up and he's a good resource too man he handles a lot of, of driver calls and stuff and you know helps out with the dispatch and helps out where it's needed everybody in this company is very very hands-on and very helpful to the best of their abilities and that's that's another reason why we promote the you know treat you like family and give you the respect you deserve because you know sometimes you go to them bigger carriers than us and even smaller carriers are as carriers the same size they don't always treat you well i mean Mm -hmm. i've heard horror stories where owners of companies like our size cuss their drivers out and and treat their drivers like crap you know it's like that just doesn't work for us you know you'll never find us cussing the driver you'll never find us you know you know, being overly critical about a driver, you know, it it doesn't work that way. It's you get treated with respect. You get to be treated like a human being. You're no different just because you drive a truck doesn't mean you get to be treated differently. Right, right. And we and this was some and this is what some truck drivers are looking for. They they looking for that respect. You know, not just not just the uh, not just the key source. You know what I'm saying? The money miles and uh, you know, money miles and home time, but we're looking for respect. We we're looking for, you know, us sacrificing our lives to to make sure that we keep America moving, and we we just ask for a little bit of respect. That's all. R e s p e c t. That's all. All right. So uh, the company, man. How how much is how much is how much experience is required there? So for us, it's a year, and it's dictated by insurance. We can't. We don't self-insure like the mega carriers do um even at a year we pay something that's crazy so we pay like 48 cents a mile for one year which is really high for for people just entering into a year and that's something that we pride ourselves in. and then if you have more than four years we pay you 50 cents and okay. then you get raised every year and we don't, have, we don't have a cap on that like you can you stay here 10 years and you know there's no cap on, on how much uh, thing goes up one of my lines is that our pay only goes up and never goes down. You don't get penalized for late and or missed appointments or stuff like that because we know stuff happens. You don't feel, you know, that communication is key. And I preach that too in orientation. Like, I can't help you if you can't, if you don't talk to me. The more you talk to me, the better off I can help you in a situation that may not be going your way. Open communications is always good. That's another that's another problem in this industry. Communications. You know, we, we get told one thing and then turn around, find out it's something else totally different because of because of miscommunication. So so you say about a so you say about a year. So you guys you you guys don't hire uh new jets out of high uh out of high school. Goddamn. Uh new jets out of truck driving school. They gotta at least have a year up under their belt. We used to have our own driving school, and they did away with it because there was just a lack of interest in it. And so we used to have those people. They used to go out, with, you know, and, and do that. And then we just realized our equipment was looking crummy, so they, like, switched it to a year, and we have some of the nicest equipment on the road. And that's something that we also pride ourselves on, how nice our equipment looks and how well it's maintained and taken care of. Okay, okay. Uh, are you guys felon, uh, felon friendly? What, what's your policies on felons? Um, five years. And then it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, okay. Well, same thing with drivers with DUIs and DWIs. Five years. 
Okay, okay. Now, the orientation is hell here in Ohio, right? But what other – you guys have any other terminals uh, for drivers nope. that, that you guys hire outside of the – outside? Well, that's another question, too. Do you guys just hire within the Ohio area, or do you guys hire outside of Ohio as well? I hire almost anywhere east of the Mississippi. Oh, uh, okay. How would oh. you – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. So, I mean, our biggest, our biggest lanes are from – Ohio to Tennessee and Ohio to PA and New Jersey. We do it. We haul a lot of, of freight from a point in Indiana to these two places. We do, you know, I have a guy that I hired out of Mississippi. You know, I have two people live in Florida. I have a handful live in Georgia and Carolina's all up through there. Usually I try to keep it below I-90 and in, in New York and then east of the Mississippi and, you know, and those people that don't live within that corridor of let's say lower Wisconsin and Indianap and uh, Indiana and Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, those are those are home weekly for us. Well Tennessee to a certain point, usually I try to keep it um, I guess the Tennessee River would be the best way to way to say that it's split. So you know, not usually out of out of Memphis. But it we have a pretty big hiring area and a very diverse diverse group of individuals that would drive for us. Okay, that's what's up. So how would you uh how would you get us up there uh as far as coming in for orientation? Um one of the ways that we get you up there is depending on where you live at. So if you live in a southern state and you like live in let's say Mississippi, we'll get, we'll probably give you a bus ticket. But if you live within a certain area we usually send one of our drivers to pick you up and it's a great learning experience because then you can pick the driver and find out how the inner workings of the company are and and that's just I feel is a really great learning experience because then you may drop a load or two with them on the way wherever you're going within that span but they usually get dropped off Monday and then the orientation's Tuesday Wednesday and out rolling by Wednesday around 5 o'clock okay okay now you said bus ticket man I'm not feeling Greyhound bro not feeling it <laughs> so if I was to if let's say if I was to uh, come over or something like that and I take a pl uh, take a plane or you know or rent my own car, would I get reimbursed for would I get reimbursed for that? That that's on you. That's the two ways that we currently provide provide drivers. I think I've paid for three bus tickets this year. Oh okay. Since I started, it's in the six months, three months. So usually everybody just agrees to be picked up. It's because I I pitch it as a learning experience like. You really want to find out, you know, what the company's about. Ride right? with this guy, you know. They have nice, clean trucks. Um, they're really great to pick their brains for and, and really see how what what goes on here. They can they can teach you some things too on the road because we run the people net system because of the ELD mandate. Right. Um, they can show you a little bit on that, and then you can really get to know it. And like, oh man, I mean, I just forged a friendship on my six-hour drive here, you know, and meet new people. So that's one of the things that we pitch. Okay. Bus tickets are usually. I have a guy. I have a. I have a person that lives in Mississippi. Lives all the way in Picayune, Mississippi, which is fifty miles outside New Orleans. By the way, <laughs> way down there south. And then I have somebody that lives in the middle of Alabama. And sometimes we can get those to pick those if we hire out of there. Okay. Okay. What's the uh, What's the hiring process is like for them from start to finish? How How long once Once we get the application into you, all the way up until we get inside the truck. Oh, so what I do is I take a pre-qualification application, and basically I take some, you know, I ask for your last four employers. Um, I ask for some personal information. You got a DUI, felonies, accidents, um, any types of tickets. I get your driver's license number and some more personal information to be able to run your MVR. Then I'm then we look at your MVR and look at your work history that's reported on your MVR, and then we make our decision from that. What's your um, MVR is definitely, definitely key in this. Let me stop you before I quit. Let me, I, I talk to a lot of drivers out here. You know, I've been in the game for five years, but I, I talked to a lot of drivers that had came across uh, some some issues like when they, th some of the drivers don't know what's on their DAC reports after they leave a company. So they, they won't know whether they, they, you know whatever situation uh that's on there that's 
that's hindering them from getting put on with a with a company like pole what do you say what what do you say to drivers that that has some situations that that they feel that's different from uh that's different from what's on a DAC report like let's say for example the company says that they they abandoned the truck but they didn't abandon the truck they did what the company told them to do by telling them to bring the truck to you know wherever wherever they want them to put the truck at because once once a company takes you tells you to stop driving their trucks for whatever reason and you drive it anyway it becomes an issue am i right it, 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 everything is played by a case-by-case -case basis if you tell me because i i've seen it to where um drivers have had unauthorized location and they turned it into a terminal where they weren't supposed to you know but they they didn't or or it's in, a, in the same long as with an abandonment I just didn't take it to the terminal they told me to. They wanted me to drive 900 miles this way, and there's one five miles from my house. And I took it there. Because it's, and everything like that on, on that type of, of what's ran on your MBR, I address it. Because i got to feel like you got to be a good fit for us. Because we want you to stay a long time. And if you're just here to, to hang out for a month or two or a few days, I have, I have no interest, and neither does my company. And that sounds really cold, but I want people who want to stay here, who want to work here, who want to be part of something potentially greater than themselves and that sounds kind of grandiose but that should be the goal for every company because with, without without truck drivers ain't nobody getting anything anymore exactly <laughs> I mean, and we know that but that's why i want people to stay and i don't want you know i i, I don't want i don't want billy bob joe off the street that's had 18 jobs in two years i'm not interested i want somebody that has you know, who's looking to better themselves, basically the same way that I came up to be in the position that I'm in now, is I wanted to better myself, and I pushed myself, so I found a place where I can make a difference at, and this is one of the places where, in the company that I can make a difference at. And, you know, I have, and we have a recruiting team here. It's it's me as as, as the lead, but then I report to, to two VPs and the safety director, too. And it's some, sometimes, you know, Maybe I want to take a chance on somebody, and well, maybe we're just not going to take the chance, you know, because there's something that I miss with me being as green as I am behind the ears. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up because a lot of a lot of drivers, when they come when they come on looking for a company, and up all of a sudden they 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 get everything done, they get to the orientation, they're in their class, they're getting happy, they almost there, and then boom is something on their something on their DAC report that's that's hindering them from moving on and and it's because of what the company what a company put on there but would you take time to listen to that driver though i mean explain his situation if any would you yeah I, everybody like i said everybody gets treated with respect even if i i even if i'm not gonna hire you i always call, call them and tell them why I'm not hiring, and I wish them the best to look out there in their job search. I just don't ignore. I don't ignore them, and that seems to be a common practice. If oh, I can't hire you, then that's that's the last you hear from us. You know, it's like I try to. You know, I've had to turn down people like, hey man, you just, you just you're just not a good fit for us at this time. But I wish you the best out there, and I hope you find something that fits your needs. Exactly. You know, and I don't, and I you know, and some come some carriers. You know, you'll run your MVR and then you'll never hear back from them. And then your assumption, I guess, it must have been bad. And then that was it. But, you know, I tried to, like, hey, you need to take care of this. Or, oh, I didn't know this was on my record. Well, I can't hire you because of this, but maybe you need to get an attorney and, and challenge this because this is inaccurate. And then that's what you're telling me. And maybe some of it's a lie to my face, but but who knows? But you gotta you got to you gotta be compassionate from where you sit as a recruiter. And I think that's lost sight in this, this industry sometime as well. But you've got to take it. With the grain, anything that anybody tells you, you got to take it with a grain of salt because you don't know what's being with the with the lie of truth until you get to know this person, and you can only base it by the facts that are given by the driver, and then you MVR, and then what whatever else is on the report, and then you go through the process of being what I like to call detective, and you and you look at each each point, like okay, why did this happen? Why did this happen? And there's you know, and then that's when you get the team involved, like all right, so this was he said X Y and Z, but this says X Y and Z, you know. And you just have to go through that process. And some drivers aren't patient. I talked to a driver, and then 
call him back a few hours. Like, hey, we can hire you. I already took a job in that position. Like, well, okay then. <laughs> you know, I already, you know, like I already called you and told you I'm going to work on this, and and I work on it. All right. At least give at, at least give you a chance. <laughs> but some, yeah. you know, some drivers they just, you know, they they just impatient. You know, especially once we put our name out there, we got like a gang of uh of carriers just calling us. And you know, and once we and once we get the ball rolling with one company, then all of a sudden another company comes into play and say, "We can offer you such and such and such and such." You know, give at least give that company that that started the process for you, you know, courtesy, give them a courtesy call and at least tell them like, hey, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to go ahead and take, you know, other opportunities instead of having them to pretty much waste their time, you know, and then all oh, of a that's, sudden. Oh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. I'll be working with the driver. Oh, yeah, I'll come to orientation, and that's the last I'll ever hear of them. They ghosted me, disappear off the face of the earth. You say face of the earth, huh? Uh, the face what kind, of the earth. Don't respond to nothing. What kind of what kind of drug test you guys uh, do? Do you guys do hair follicles or uh, or urine uh, test? Urine test. Urine test. Pre-employment urine test. Then you got your randoms, and then you have your random alcohol test too as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about for drivers that had their DOT cards already? Do we got to come in and do another DOT test? Nope. Your DOT card is good until it expires. Okay. Okay. And then you go to your own doctor, and if you don't have one, we'll pay for your. We'll pay for that to go to a different one. Now, here's my thing. Uh, here's my thing, Corey. You got uh, companies offers uh, sign-on bonuses. I I call them incentives because a sign-on bonus to me is when I sign that dine, that dotted line, I get a check right then and there. Would you? Would do you guys offer a sign-on bonus? And if so, how is it paid out? So we offer a four thousand dollars sign-on bonus. Um, we do not pay for orientation, but on your very first paycheck period, you get five hundred dollars of that sign-on bonus minus taxes. So, and then thirty days, another five hundred. Ninety days, a thousand, and then six months, two thousand. Um, there is a problem within the industry for where people um, job jump for bonuses mm -hmm. and for paid orientation. And it used to be it used to be a very prevalent problem, and this is a way the company protects itself. Mm -hmm. And yes, it incentivizes the driver to stay because in six months I like somebody hand me two grand. It'd okay. be great, you know. And all I had to do was work for six months. It'd be fantastic. And I can who could be mad about that? Do they have to go? Do do they have to go through hoops? Like, is there threshold that they no. got to do? No. Oh, okay. You got to work here for thirty days. You got to oh. take your first load out <laughs> for your first installment. That's okay. all you got to do. Okay. You got to be where you got to be working. Okay. And something else that we offer, which which I've seen too, is we offer four thousand dollars if you refer a driver to us and if they stay for six months. All right, so and they got to they got to stay different. they got to stay for the full six months in order to get that full four thousand dollars. Yes, but the catch is it, the payments all are a thousand dollars. So after that, so if you refer a driver, they start orientation, they go out on their first load. That very following pay period, you get a thousand dollars extra on your check. Oh, okay, okay, that's what's up. So and then it's a then it's a thousand at thirty, a thousand at ninety, and then a thousand at six months. Now let me ask you this: I'm glad you mentioned uh, driver referral, man. Uh, and this is and and this is something that I that I need to start asking uh, for drivers and drivers. This is what you guys need to start asking too. What is y'all or let me see if I can word it right. What is y'all social media policy? Because a lot of these drivers that's coming out here, they like to. Uh, they like to do YouTube videos so that they can, you know, chron uh, chronicle their, you know, their their journey into a company. What is you guys stands on social media as far as the company goes? We don't have one. We we put our own social media stuff out out on our own Facebook page. What the drivers do is what the drivers do. And if, unfortunately, if you want to talk bad to us, my first question to that driver, if anybody wants to talk negatively, is if you have a beef, why haven't you reached out to us? That's the whole point of being like a family. If you have a problem, 
there are multiple people in multiple different positions within this company that can help you out. You know, if you want to chronicle, I know some of our drivers, I'm friends with them on Facebook, mm-hmm. are very, they don't say anything about us, but they chronicle their journeys to the different places. There's a one lady I can just about count on every day. She's taking a picture of, of her in a, in a parking, in a, in, a, in, a, in a truck stop or at a, a stop of, of where she's been. And some of the pictures are very interesting. I got another driver that, you know, they've been up into New York and sitting across the bay at a, at a, at a stop, at a, at a customer's stop, and they're taking pictures of the sunset over New York, you know, and they submit those pictures to us and we put them on there. But as the terms of limiting drivers on social media, that's their own, and we really don't have a policy. Oh, okay, that's that's what's up. That's what's up because, uh, you know, a few drivers that I have talked to in the past, some of them actually got uh, – got terminated because of their uh social media presence on youtube um so as far as as far as talking about the company uh chronicle chronicling their their journey you you guys don't won't have no problem with with that driver you know putting the the company vehicle in their in their videos or anything like that at this time, we have no policy about it. Okay, okay. That's see now. That's what's up. That that is what's up, man. My green screen sucks. I hate this. All right, man. Well, um, hold on, wait, quick. Let me see if I got a few. I just got a few more, a uh, few more questions, man. A few more questions for you. Uh, what's the CPM of the company? What's what, what's the starting pay? Starting pay is forty eight cents. You get a half cent raise every year that you're here as a as a as an automatic raise. Um, if you have four plus years experience, you start out at fifty cents. There's no sliding scale either. One to four gets forty eight, and five plus gets fifty. Um, it's try to be fair. Uh, we are we are a company. Everybody's got a you know. There's been guys that have been here since 1996. You know, okay. it's just it's just the way we do things. One of the things we do is we lowered our recently lowered our health share health insurance requirement. So most companies usually wait make you wait ninety days. For us, if you wait 30 days and you have insurance, okay. Um, so we try to we try to speed it up. Um, I mean, we offer a slew of you know the standard breakdown pay, layover pay, detention pay. It's basically industry standard, and then you know you get a safety bonus paid out once a year too. So if you drive 150 miles, we're paying you two cents a mile for that 150, and you're getting a safety bonus if you make meet that qualification. And that's another way that drivers make extra money for us too all right and that and that 48 cent is is right out the gate right is it's not right tiered, out the gate it's not tiered to no. anything else nope it's straightforward that's the only that's the only thing that i promise for my position is how much you're going to make because the rest is really up to you oh, if okay. you want to stop at every truck stop between here in new jersey that's on you and you're not going to get that many miles and that's unfortunate but if you want to want to hustle hard and and get there in, in no time, then you're going to be rolling, and dispatch trusts you to be there on time. Guess what, man? You're going to be rolling in those miles. Okay. And that's what that's what doesn't get me. You got people that you know don't want to leave out when they're supposed to, and they wonder like, well, I didn't get any of the miles this week. Did you leave on time? No, I was two days behind. Well, that's some of your problems, you know. And we try to, you know, we try to encourage drivers to leave on time, and you know, it's a balance. And I know drivers look to us to help them balance their home time and stuff. You know, I can't read a can't read 125 miles impossible okay that's what's up that's what's up man Corey. man so far so far you 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 pride yourself as being uh as being one of these honest recruiters out here man how 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 would the people how 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 would the people that's uh potentially watching this video get in contact with you man so they can uh so they can find out more about pole transportation there's a couple ways. You can look us up on Facebook, uh, Pull Transportation Inc. We're on Facebook. We actually have our own YouTube channel. It's mainly training videos and some videos that we put together. Or I can be reached at my direct line, which is 937-526-8813. Come straight to me. I'm willing to help anybody that's, you know, that's interested in working for us. I mean, it is a selective process, and we're very selective. But usually anybody that we hire, they stay. Our retention rate is right around 70%. What do you get? Have a lot of turnover. Since you mentioned retention, what what do you, what do you guys do to provide uh, to provide drivers to to potentially stay and maybe want to finish out their career with you guys? So if we get a problem, 
and we don't offer incentives to stay because when it really boils down to is there's a problem and we look at ourselves in an honest aspect as a company to see what can we do to better serve this driver and we ask the driver well what can they do to better serve us so you're not getting enough miles in home time so we look at and see what factors play into that are you leaving on time or did you just happen to have an unlucky week and get a lot of short hauls and stuff and then we try to make an adjustment you know without without negatively impacting both parties involved because there is you know there is two parties involved in this and that's basically how we do that they're not paid extra to stay they're not given extra money to, to stay it's just you know it's me reaching out or somebody else reaching out to this driver I'm like all right what's going on i hear you've got some problems you know or you're mad about not getting a smile okay let's go back and see what you got last, last couple of weeks and okay can we let me go let me go talk to so and so and maybe we come up with a plan let me call you back it's kind of how we do it around all right, all right. So you you mentioned earlier about your equipment. You said there's your you guys' equipment is the best out on the road right now. What equipment that you guys are are running? We're running Volvo 780s and 860s, some of the best equipment out there. I can see I can see people already rolling their eyes, yelling, "Peter built this, Kenworth this." But in the terms of transmission and reliability. If you're not driving a Volvo, I don't know what you're driving. Then the smooth, the smooth ride, the spacious interior, um, the ability to be like a home away from home, is is why we provide our drivers with the Volvos to ha- keep them comfortable and stuff. And yeah, it may not be the stylish. It's like the Hondas, Hondas of the world is Volvo. You know, it's okay. not the stylish looking car out there, but it's reliable and it gets the job done a lot better and lasts a lot longer. What's the uh, what's the amenities in there? You you mentioned to keep the driver comfortable. So what what we got inside the trucks as far as uh, as far as keeping us comfortable? You have the option for a, well, they all come with dual beds. Obviously, the kitchen has like a minor kitchenette. Um, was thus being a small, we can't provide APUs and inverters and fridges to everyone. So the driver usually buy them themselves, and they stay with the, the driver and stuff. So we'll put it in there. Um, we have what I like to call a common sense idle policy. If it, you know, our trucks don't shut off on drivers, and I hear a lot, a lot of yeah. companies, yeah. they have that, they have that temperature. I will say, in fairness and in, in honest disclosure, is that we used to do that, and then we realized it costs us more money to have that shut off, because then you got to bump the idle up, so you're actually using more fuel to have that idle be bumped up. And you got to understand, um, you got to understand these Cleveland weathers, man. These these Cleveland these these Cle- this this Cleveland Ohio weather, man. You know. Ha- having the truck shut down at about five minutes and and nah not comfortable not comfortable at all i've, I've been in a truck that that had an idle policy and and the uh, apu went out and i literally had to sleep up in the front just to keep pressing the gas so that the truck won't turn off that was not a fun night <laughs> that was not a I fun can only, night. i can only imagine that that was but not i mean ours were set off to be reasonable i think it was like between 40 and 60 degrees it went idle or something crazy like that so i mean but then we just realized it just wasted more fuel and so we got rid of the policy and then you know people like what about the winter time it's cold we got those s4 bunk heaters Mm -hmm. them suckers will roast you out if you ever complain about being cold one of those and hit uh, you must have the windows down or something because i used to work on those bad boys and i had one of those go on and they just they bake you said I mean, it, they're controlling stuff. You said it real good. You know, summertime, and if it's 90 degrees out, turn the air conditioning on. Turn your truck on. For the love of God, use common sense. That's and what's there's up. no point in you out there dying, sweating, you know. Run your truck. Turn the AC on. Be comfortable. That's what's up, man. Uh, of course, we can take the trucks home. Yeah, take the trucks home. And what is the trucks governing that? 68. Okay, okay, okay. We got a little got a little pep in our step over there. All right. What about uh what about yeah. pet what about pet and rider policy? So for our, our rider policy, after thirty days of accident accident free employment, your rider can ride year round at no cost to you. Oh, okay, okay. Well that's what's up. So the rider rides for free. That's what's then up. Then the pet policy, it's a maximum of a thirty pound dog or cat if you have a 30 pound cat i want to see this personally um <laughs> it's a 500 hundred dollar refundable deposit which they break down into five increments and once you move trucks or you know, your animal no longer rides with you barring that there's no damage from said animal they'll give you that money right back no question asked do you guys offer uh do you guys offer lease opportunities there 
No, we are company only. It's just, this is my personal standpoint. I just don't think there's money to be made as a lease operator for anybody involved. From what I've watched on the horror stories and all of the Facebook groups that I've ever joined in regards to trucking, I just see, I just see owner operators. I'm not making money. I'm not doing this. I have seen successful stories in all fairness, but in my mind, a majority of the people who go out and be LOs, they just don't make it. And they come back and be company drivers. I have a bunch of people that I hired that used to be OOs. And like, there's just not money in it anymore. The margins are so thin because everybody's being undercut, you know, by, by other carriers for, for rates. It's just hard to make money. You can't, you can't compete anymore. And that's why you see a lot of companies go under. And that's why it's been a bloodbath for the last two and a half years, and it will yeah. continue to be so. And it's it's continued to be so. It was a it was it, we're up to like what three four companies so far that that uh, that shut down since January. Yeah, and and Celadon was the big shocker for sure. But you know you kind of saw that coming when the guys got charged a couple years right. ago, and right. you know they were trying to save the company, but it just didn't work out that way. Right, and was but that's on what, the wall. that's the biggest company ever to fail. Yeah, that, the writing was on the wall for that company. Man. All right, well, Corey, man, hey, I appreciate you stopping by, you know, chopping it up with me about uh, about your stance on uh, recruiting and uh, and talking about, your, uh, talking about your company, Pole Transportation, here in Ohio. Another Go truck. Go Bucks. Another trucking, another local trucking company out of Ohio. I did not realize that there is so many of us out here. <laughs> and there's five of us in our area, believe it or not. There's five trucking companies in Versailles. Now, let me now. Now, look, OK, look, I'm I'm not trying to I'm not trying to start no shit here. I'm, I'm not trying to start no shit here, man. But. But being that all being that all of us is in this is it's in the same it's in the same grouping. What are you offering to entice drivers over to you guys that the other companies over over the other companies? Um, stability and home time. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, I, I'm not starting no shit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, this is it, 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 to be honest with you. This is trucking. This is a business and it is cutthroat. And, you know, just it, it, it's already it's, it's already hard enough to get good drivers out here. So my man, Corey, has to has to figure out has to figure out ways to to make his company stand out of the herd. That's pole transportation. Give them a call if y'all are interested in uh in uh pole transportation. Corey, my man, thank you very much for joining me, man. I really do appreciate it. Um and yeah, if you have anything else or you know, if if any changes should come up in the future, man, definitely holler, you know, reach out to me and uh, I will help you get the information out there, man. Thank you very much. Hey, no problem, Sean. All right, man. You take it easy and you have a rest blessed of your day. It is the sun's out. I'm looking. The sun's out now. It might. Let me see. What time is it? Yeah, it's about uh, close to 1 o'clock, so it might change within the hour. <laughs> Good old Ohio. <laughs> All right, Corey, man. Thank you for joining me, man. I really do appreciate it. You have a blessed day. Hey, you too. All right. Guys, if you interested in pole transportation, definitely give them a call. Hey, what, what do you what do you guys think of this? This this was like an interview slash MTV, I mean MTC style slash. Hey, I really appreciate it. If you guys know any recruiters or any recruiters yourself want to come on and and promote your company, definitely come on my platform to do it. You can get at me at lockoutmanpodcast at gmail .com, or if you're in one of the messenger groups or on Facebook. You know, you guys probably might know me by my government name, but there, you know, it's locked out up under, up under the bottom of it. You guys want to come in and 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 chop it up with me about the company, what your company got to offer for these drivers out here? I have I have a good following of drivers that's interested in in finding out what you have to give. All right. So again, what you guys think of this call, man? Well, call interview. However. 
You know, like I said before, if you live in Ohio, he also hires outside of Ohio. So still, you know, you got he'll get you down there via via Greyhound. But I mean, you know, if you like live in the in if you like live near Ohio or something like that, and you can, you know, take your you know your own transportation there, I'm sure he will reimburse for the bus ticket only, no more than that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, guys, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. And don't forget to hit the all button. I mean, you know, YouTube is just, it's just too much, too much. And it's all part of the algorithm. All right. You guys have a blessed day. I'll stop back at you guys with another interview, video, whatever. I'll come back at you guys with another one. Y'all take it easy. Peace. There we go. All right, bro. You still here? Yeah, I'm still there. Oh, all right, man. Well, hey, thank you, man, for stopping on, man. I really do appreciate it. It's a pretty good interview, <laughs> man. Thank you, thank you. See? Hey, no I, problem, man. See, I wasn't gonna I, I wasn't gonna do all that good stuff.